Hey guys, welcome to another week of the online message. So this week we have a very special guest, uh, one of our youth leaders, Haven Dingus. She's one of our college students who comes back every summer. Uh, and this is her first summer serving as a leader. Uh, and she is super excited um, to have this opportunity to share the word. Uh, and just so you know, she'll let you know later, but just so you know, we will be looking in the book of Ephesians today. So before we get to Haven's message, just want to let you know a few things happening. Uh, first is that the board has approved for us to go back to group, like larger group meetings, which means for all of our events. So for our hangout nights, we're going to combine them to one hangout night a month. And then also the bash three is going to be for grades six through 12. And that date is July 31st. So Friday, July 31st, 7 p.m. till August 1st, Saturday, 7 a.m. We are gonna have the third bash, which is our overnight event. Super excited, more details to come on that. And I believe right now, those are all the announcements I have. So would you join me in a word of prayer as we just quiet our hearts uh, and we look to God together. Lord, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for this opportunity to look into your word so freely. I thank you for this online presence that we can share the good news um, each week on this channel and just share it with others. Lord, I pray for those who are watching. Lord, may you just speak to them. May you speak through Haven and may you just speak to your children. God, may you reveal new things to us through this message, through your scriptures. And Lord, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we thank you and we love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, without further ado, to you, Haven. Hi, guys. Uh, this is Haven, one of your youth leaders. And um, so this week, I'm going to be talking a lot about our identity in Christ and who we are in Christ and what God's word says about us as believers in Christ. Um, so this has just been what the Lord has been laying on my heart lately a lot. Um, he's been teaching me about who I am in Christ. And um, so, yeah, I, I really felt like it was on my heart to share that with you guys as well. Um, when Tyler asked me to speak. So I was, I was really happy to say yes, just because of all that the Lord has been teaching me about when it comes to identity. So the passage that uh, we're going to be looking at today is Ephesians chapter 1. Um, the book of Ephesians is just so full of like God's grace and it's so full of just all about our identity um, at, rooted in scripture. So yes, this is just a wonderful book to read. Um, if you're looking for something to read out of the Bible, I would definitely recommend reading Ephesians because it is just so amazing. I read it over and over again, and it speaks fresh to me every time. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, so let's start with verse 1 of Ephesians chapter 1. So Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus. So he's writing to believers in Jesus there. Okay, so he says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So really quick, just to even talk about these first couple of verses, um, Paul addresses the people in the church of Ephesus as God's holy people. Um, and he calls them, like he labels them by being the faithful in Christ Jesus. So just that verse right there, um, that sentence tells us that those who believe in Christ Jesus, so that's us as believers, um, we are God's holy people. 
like he goes right off the bat and talks about that part of our identity. So we are God's holy people. Um, and then he continues, so grace and peace to us from God. So God gives us grace through Jesus. Grace is favor and his love that we didn't earn and we didn't deserve, but God gave it to us through his son, Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross for us. And peace too, peace comes from God as well. And then Paul goes on. Um, now in this next section, he just begins to talk about everything that God has done for us as Christians, as believers, everything that Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross, um, on our behalf. And um, he talks about everything that we are now as believers. So verse three starts by saying, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. This is like so amazing, guys. Um, just saying, um, just looking at this verse, first of all, um, we were chosen. So as believers, we were chosen before God even created the world. He chose us and um, we are his people. But it gets even crazier in this verse because he chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight. That says so much about who we are because we are going to, sometimes in life, we're not going to feel holy and blameless. <laughs> we're going to feel pretty uh, mad at ourselves or like we're pretty not... Um, not doing too hot, and we're going to say, wow, I feel really, really gross. Um, I feel really, really dirty. Um, like, if there's a sin that we're living in, or if there's, like, a problem that we're going through, um, we sometimes we condemn ourselves, and sometimes we end up feeling very, very ashamed and guilty, but God's word says differently about us as believers. God's word says that we, before God, are holy and blameless if we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior. This is because of what Jesus did on the cross for you and for me. When Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood Guess what the blood of Jesus does? It cleanses us from our sin. And when we stand before God, he sees the blood of Jesus. And that is who we are now. Um, just uh, to explain a bit more, like in my own personal life, um, I have been going through some hardships myself. And, um, and sometimes when I catch myself like doing something wrong, or in a sin, you know, sometimes I'll get very, very down on myself and just say, wow, like I'm very upset with myself right now and I don't know what to do here. But God has continually been reminding me that I am redeemed. He says to me, daughter, you are redeemed because of what Jesus did on the cross. And so I want to challenge you guys, when you are feeling maybe upset with yourself, when you are just so down, when you're feeling like you are just not a great person, like just remember, look in the mirror and say, I am redeemed because you are a redeemed son or daughter of God. That is who you are because of the blood of Jesus. So in verse 5, Paul writes, In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. Let's stop really quick right there. Um, this, this is also a huge truth about who we are in Christ. If we believe in Jesus Christ 
as our Savior. We are a son or a daughter of God, God Almighty. We are his children now. God has adopted us into his family. If you ever struggle with feeling like you don't belong somewhere, or maybe you struggle with feeling like you don't have like a family here on earth, you are a beloved son or daughter of God. You are a part of his royal family. You are a son or a daughter of the King, the Most High. That is who you are in Jesus. And um, verse 6, let's move on to verse 6. Verse 6 says, To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Now, really quick, that's super cool. However, I also wanted to share verse 6 from the King James Version. And I know Tyler's probably going to laugh at me, but uh, King James is like really beautiful sometimes. The language is cool. Um, so it's my favorite Bible version. So I'm just going to read from King James also for verse 6. So verse 6 says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. I just love the language here because it says accepted in the beloved. That is just so amazing to me that we as Christians, we are accepted by God. Um, if you struggle with feeling rejection, um, if you struggle with feeling like, again, like you don't belong somewhere, God accepts you in Christ. Um, this is just so cool to me. And I think just the more that we understand how accepted we are by God, um, the less that people's acceptance matters to us, the less that um, people's rejection of us stings. Because when we know that we're accepted by the Father, it doesn't matter um, if people reject us or if they're mean to us or if they, you know. So yes, we, we are accepted by God. We are accepted in the beloved. That's the other word that really sticks out here because Paul really could have just wrote, yeah, we're accepted and ended it there. And it still would have made sense, but he goes out of his way to use the word beloved. Um, so that means just that we are accepted in God's love for us. Like we are beloved by God acceptance and love they go hand in hand together for us um, as believers so um, let's continue verse 7 says in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us so yes I already kind of talked about this before but um, we have been redeemed we have been purchased by the blood of Christ. Um, we have the forgiveness of our sins. Y'all, this is like really amazing here. <laughs> like our sins are forgiven. Um, past, present, future, our sins are forgiven in Jesus because of his blood shed for us on the cross. Um, and once you understand this, once you understand just how much God has forgiven you of your sins, once you understand the immense forgiveness that he has towards you, um, it just, you fall in love with Jesus. I'm gonna be very real here. Like you will fall in love with the Lord the more and more that you understand how much he has forgiven you of your sins. Um, so yeah, that's super important here about your identity, you're forgiven. That's huge. Um, so continuing, um, with all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ, in him we were also chosen, 
having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. So really quick, I know, I know we just read a lot, um, but just to recap, I want to put a little bit of emphasis here on verse 12 when it says that we might be for the praise of his glory. Um, another part of our identity in Christ is that our life gives glory to God. Um, God saved us. He redeemed us. And because of that fact, just because of what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross, our life glorifies God. And that is just like super cool. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Verse 13, um, and you were, you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Um, this is so awesome. These last couple of verses here um, of this section, because it says we were included in Christ when we heard the gospel and when we first believed on him. So we've been included in Christ. And then he goes on to say that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Um, when we first believed, God gave us the Holy Spirit as a seal. The word seal means that it can't be broken. God has given us his Holy Spirit and it can't be taken away from us. And also what this is saying is that the Holy Spirit guarantees our future in Christ, our future salvation, our future in eternity with God. And the Holy Spirit is our inheritance from God himself. That is also who we are. We are indwelt by the Spirit. That means the Spirit lives within us and he guides us, he directs us. Um, he shows us the way that we should go. And this Holy Spirit is the sign that we are gonna be spending eternity with God. And that's the guarantee of our eternity with God. And that's another really important part of identity, um, just to be secure in your eternity with God and to be secure in the fact that you are saved, to be secure in the fact that you are going to heaven when you die because you know that Jesus is your savior. You know that he has given you eternal life. So yes, we, we really only just read through 14 verses together, but these 14 verses have changed my life. Um, God has used these words um, just to change how I see myself. And so what does it mean to find our identity in Christ? Um, it means that when the world tells us something about ourselves or when the enemy tells us something about ourselves, like something as in um, you are your sins or you are what you do. Um, the world might tell us that we find our identity in um, like the activities we do or the sports we do or our relationships, our family, that sort of thing. And, um, but God's word tells us who we really are. God's word tells us the truth. And so as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus, it's so important for us to read this book because this is not just a book, it's the word of God. And God's words will change your life if you take the time to internalize them and truly believe on them, believe what God says about you. Your life will totally transform and you will just experience God working in your life so much.
through that. Thanks, Haven, so much for sharing this week. And just to clarify for everyone watching, I have no issue with the King James Version. Uh, it's a simple uh, joke between Haven and I. Um, but Haven, again, thank you for your word. And for those watching, I hope that you can be challenged today to truly look at where you find your identity. You know, where your identity comes from. Because we as believers, our identity is found in Christ. We are Christians. We are disciples of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus. We are sons and daughters of God the Father. So may you leave this video blessed by God's word. May you leave challenged by God's message through Haven. And may you go and make disciples. May you go and find your identity in Christ. Blessings to you.